Mm -hmm. So we were doing the scene, and I threw up blue slushy on his dick, and I was like, mm. Your wardrobe screams father. We have more trust in that top side than people. How would you really with your father? Just saying. Why Did you the get the attention you wanted? You need Jesus. That's offensive. All right. Hello, everyone. Hi. <laughs> Welcome back to That's Offensive. And I have someone here with me who has a really offensive career. <laughs> <laughs> to a lot of people. To a lot of people. Jenna Fox. Hi. <laughs> you may have seen her on... Pornhub, I'm assuming, and X videos, X hamster, <laughs> browsers. Yep. Why do you think so many people find porn to be offensive? Like, what is it about porn that they find so offensive? I honestly think that uh, people don't. They're they want to do what we do, and <laughs> they can't do it because they either don't like their body or they don't like yeah. how they look or they're not confident. Uh -huh. So they get mad at us because we're confident enough to be fucking on camera. There you go. Honestly, yeah. I feel like that's pretty accurate. There's definitely some like religious aspects too to why people don't like porn stars, but like that too. It's just a little unreasonable because Jesus liked porn stars or the sex workers back then. Yeah, they're the main ones who love us. Yeah. Behind closed doors. <laughs> little it's, Bible thumpers. Oh yeah. Little like nun outfits. Mm -hmm. Strip it all off. They love us. <laughs> so tell me about your upbringing. What what were you always a whore? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was a blowjob whore. Like I was it's so funny but weird. I was afraid mm -hmm. of getting pregnant. Mm -hmm. So any boyfriend or girlfriend I had, I mean, obviously girls can't get pregnant. It was like yeah. the beauty of it. I'd fuck them. <laughs> but the guys, I would just give them blowjobs and stuff because I was afraid to fuck. Uh -huh. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I was afraid of getting pregnant. Damn. I was kind of a blowjob whore in high school too. <laughs> See, I just, I was too afraid of going home and be like, fuck dad, I'm pregnant. Mm hmm. Am, are you gonna kick me out the house? Like I was afraid yeah. of that whole scenario. <laughs> and then my last boyfriend had a really big dick. Uh huh. And we tried. Like I tried to sit on it, and I was like, "Oh fuck, no! Sorry, yeah. can we go watch a movie? Because <laughs> this is too much for me." Was that the end of the relationship, or was that no? Just that was just like the end of me trying to have sex until I got into porn. Oh, okay. What year was that? Or what were you in high school or after high school? I think I was fresh going into high school and we tried. <laughs> and then uh -huh. after that, we didn't we didn't try after that. Cause I was like, I'm sorry, I can't do it. Yeah. So I either started dating women and I was just giving him blowjobs because he was a really good guy. <laughs> and then porn took my virginity. Hey. Oh, actually? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. That's so funny. <laughs> Did not expect that one. Um, so what was your like childhood experience like? Did you have strict parents, loose parents? My parents were loose. <laughs> I mean, they weren't loose. They had rules. Get mm -hmm. good grades. That's that was their number one rule. Graduate mm -hmm. and bring home good grades. Yeah. Other than that, they as long as I didn't get pregnant yeah. and do crazy things that obviously would put me in jail or whatnot, uh -huh. they let me do whatever I wanted. I uh -huh. was never home. Wow. Ever. Did you have like a curfew? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I was never home. My neighbor, best friend's mom would always ask me where was I going? And I was like, to a friend's house. What do you mean? <laughs> But like partying at a club, <laughs> all age clubs, promoting in my I lived in Miami when I was like growing up. So uh -huh. it, this is very normal behavior for all of us, like middle schoolers and high schoolers going to all age clubs, going to space, promoting, hanging out with the older Wait, guys. Is space an all age club? It used to be. OK, they, I know it's different now. Yeah, but no, it used to be an all age club. That's crazy. So like, were you guys drinking at these all age clubs? Yep. Yeah. They weren't serving alcohol inside, but obviously you could sneak the it in. Guys who we would go with were older or we'd pregame at like a house and then we'd all go there drunk. But we wow. were drinking at these places. That's hilarious because I feel like LA is pretty similar where like they'll literally just like check a credit card or something and you can be 14 and they'll let you in. You know, I, I heard that's true, but when I actually first moved out to LA and I was still like under 21, I was 19 when I moved uh -huh. out here. And I tried to go to a club with a friend and we went with promoters and she was like, just bring your ID. And I was like, my ID doesn't say 21. She's like, it's okay. All you need is like a picture. Uh -huh. They didn't let me in. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's never happened to me and in a I club like, out here. Whoa. I, they gave me, <laughs> one time a promoter gave me like a redhead's ID and was like, just go with it, man. And they let me in. 
I don't know why it didn't work. I was like, probably the promoter wasn't good. Maybe I was like, it's fine. You know, I'll just go back home and stuff my face and get high. It's fine. But I was like, if I was in Miami, I would have been in there by now. (laughs) So when you were out of high school, did you like want to go to college? Did you have like, what did you do after high school? I, I did go to college for a year, uh-huh. but I went to art school. So okay. it's not like college because you were partying like art students, theater students. Mm-hmm. We're all a bunch of fucking weirdos. So yeah. even in like the theater program, we weren't doing shit. Really? We were like just you making didn't... shit. <laughs> <laughs> just making art, uh-huh. going to like student art shows. But it was always like we were separated from the rest of the school because we'd have our own events. Yeah. And we would be in this people like half of us would be in the studio, like at the college, just all night partying or just like going to different exhibits within the school. It was uh-huh. weird. We didn't learn shit. <laughs> it was just a party. It was literally a party. So I like dropped out. Yeah, that's how I felt about the U of A. But like, I didn't want the party to stop. <laughs> I almost wish I would have done like sorority life. Uh huh. But they're crazy. They're really strict. I don't know Sororities are really strict. Like, I like I started getting like big ish on Instagram by posting pasty pics, but like a sorority wouldn't have let me post the pasty pics. It would have like made me take it down. So you couldn't be like the horrors we are today. It's very much like TV sorority life is very different than real life sorority life. And a lot of the girls in sororities that I know, at least like they all hate each other except for their little friend groups. Oh, that's sad. Yeah, it's like they'll have like their little friend group of like five or six people, and outside the friend group, there's like a lot of like drama and weirdness. Mm. No, mm. I don't do clicks. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> so how did you start stripping? Did you start stripping in college before college? Yes, uh, stripping was first. I was uh-huh. Straight out of high school, I was like, uh-huh. I want to make money. I yeah. don't want to like live off my parents in a way. So I was like. <laughs> I went to this strip club, my favorite strip club ever in Florida. <laughs> um, and they were like, do you want to work here? I was like, yeah. So they took me in, got me naked, asked me if I had like any tattoos. And then I started dancing and I went home with like a bag of money and I like dumped it on my parents' bed. And I was like, I'm a stripper. And they were like, you're lying. I was like, <laughs> where do you think all these like the <laughs> wands come from? <laughs> And they're like, stop with club. And I was like, the one like literally around the block from the house. And they're like, oh my God. I was like, don't go in during the daytime. You might see something you don't want to see. So dad, if you go out with your boys, yeah. just go at night. Don't go in the daytime because I'll be there. Were they supportive or were they like, what the fuck are you doing? They were supportive. They didn't care. I was making money. I was supporting myself in college. Yeah. And then I moved out. Mm-hmm. like shortly after and they're like are you ready and i was like i wanted to move out and i was like two <laughs> yeah. i'm ready <laughs> so they were cool they're very supportive like anything i've done or told them about they're just like be careful be safe yeah go to the doctor <laughs> literally all they taught me that's fucking awesome do you think having such supportive parents has helped your confidence and just like you can do whatever you want to do kind of thing yeah i would say a hundred percent it's helped because if i did mm, No, I don't know because I'm an Aquarius. So Mm -hmm. I almost feel like people who have told me that they don't have the support from their family, Mm -hmm. like it breaks them down. But for me, I probably am like, okay, (laughs) I don't care. Don't support me. Whatever. I'm still going to do what I want to do. I'm an adult. Yeah. So maybe I'm too overly confident, but I mean, we love to see it though. It's helped a lot. So yeah. why do the strip clubs ask if you have any tattoos? Do they not like tattoos? Much like a porn thing, they ask you. Um, they don't do it so much anymore, but like you mm-hmm. would go in for go So like modeling go and they would what, tell what's you. What's a go-see? Um, you go to studios, uh-huh. the different ones back in the day. And mm-hmm. they like, not this necessarily director, but like people who are head of like the company kind of in a way, want to see what you look like without photoshop without pictures without makeup so they Uh tell you to come in obviously come in very presentable and pretty yeah but they want to see what your body naturally looks like without all the editing and stuff that they do behind the camera Uh uh-huh so we would go in strip down they'd be like do you have any tattoos and like no they're like wow you're a unicorn because every girl at least has one tattoo Uh (laughs) uh-huh so it's the same in the strip club they don't hire a lot of girls that have a ton of tattoos because you're not sellable interesting which is weird because i think tattoos are hot 
Yeah, because there's the whole like suicide girl look that everyone tries to go for now. Or not and everyone, but a lot of people. Too. I feel like suicide girls kind of made tattoos sexy for yeah. mainstream media because strip clubs are not even mainstream media. And, and even TikTok. And I feel TikTok. like TikTok is because a lot of girls who have like a lot of tats who look, are very like unique looking, they get a lot of views. Yeah. Whereas now, like girls like me, <laughs> I struggle to get. We don't get any views anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we're not the unicorns anymore we really aren't <laughs> it sucks but it's okay it's okay tattoos are a big commitment i can't commit to anything like that yeah i've all i wanted to have like a full sleeve uh -huh. at one point in my life but i can't sit there and commit to the process of getting a whole sleeve i mm -mm. would be like a one and done i'd be like yeah do whatever you want right now because i'm not coming back <laughs> just do it all i don't care <laughs> um so what got you into the porn like what was the moment you were like i want to do porn i want to get into mainstream porn i got in by chance i was flashing in a netflix movie mm -hmm. called everglades killings and the owner of reality kings was on set because there was predominantly like porn actresses on set is reality kings like a porn thing yeah okay it's like one of the big ones like brazzers bang uh -huh. bros okay so the owner was on set and he was like you ever thought about doing porn i was like yeah mm -hmm. love that shit how do i get in he was like come in tomorrow for casting and it all went down up down uphill from there so you lost your virginity doing porn? Was yep. it on set? Yep, my first scene. Oh my God. <laughs> it was interesting. Uh, I didn't bleed, I guess. A lot of people say like you bleed. Yeah, I didn't. I just felt very awkward because uh -huh. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I've never, never rode a dick before. So, okay, <laughs> and I'm on camera. So there's like yeah. technical things you have to do and like look for and like open up. And I was like, does that look good? No. Okay. So <laughs> it was interesting. We got ice cream after. Uh huh. They. I was just the only thing I was upset about is that they didn't market the that you scene were virgin? the way they were supposed to. Uh, what do they market it as? Just a first time boy girl scene. And I heard once I came out to LA and got my career started that they were supposed to market it as girl loses her virginity to porn. And it would yeah. have done different things for my career. Yeah. But it's Miami. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit amateur. <laughs> Did you have any like internal conflict going to porn? I mean, you just went straight into stripping. So it sounds like. No, I, I'm very okay with my body. Granted, the first time I went on stage as a stripper, I felt like I was going to shat myself. Mm -hmm. But that's normal because you're going out naked in front of like a crowd of people. You don't know how they're going to react to you. Yeah. But. I felt like porn was kind of the same way. I was just like, I mean, this is my body. They're either going to like it or not. I mm -hmm. mean, I'll stop if I'm not getting the feedback I want. I will literally <laughs> stop and go do another career. Uh -huh. But I just, I was fine with it. I just jumped right into it. And I was like, woo, I'm here. <laughs> woo. <laughs> Let's do it. Um, So when did you start doing mainstream porn? Like what um, year? I would say the, towards the end. Nope. Mm. I would say towards the end of 2016 mm -hmm. is when I started. And then a few months later, she came straight out to LA and then stayed, did some work, did go sees, went back to Florida, packed all my shit. And I was like, I'm going to LA. Bye. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah. I would say I officially started my career when I came out to LA. Mm -hmm. But I did start in Miami first. So, what's the payment for porn like? Because I know. I feel like there's a lot of different conceptions. Like mm -hmm. I thought before hearing some other people talk about it, like I thought that you got paid like v based off of the views you were getting. So mm -hmm. what <laughs> what is the payment like? The payment is, which is funny too, because people seem to think porn stars are these rich ass people mm -hmm. and they're not. Some are, yes, like some are not, I wouldn't say rich, but they uh -huh. have money. And that came with a lot of different aspects of it, of them having that ability to make that much or have that much. Maybe they saved, maybe they jumped into other careers after and like combined mm -hmm. the two, which some people have. Yeah. Um. But no, the check, the first time check you get is like on set is $1,000 for a boy girl. Mm -hmm. So that's like the standard. And as you get popular and you have more notoriety behind you, mm -hmm. you're able to uh, set your rate higher. 
Yeah. But it's almost up to the studio if they're willing to pay that rate. Mm -hmm. So it's like if they like you and they think you're good enough for that rate, they'll pay the rate you want. Yeah. But the standard is $1,000 just for like a boy girl scene. Wow. Do you think you made more stripping or doing porn? I would say I made more stripping when I did it. I only did it for a year. <laughs> so I got into porn and I was like, all right, bye, next thing. Uh huh. But I did make a ton stripping. And granted, that money is not counted by the IRS. So oh, I mean, it's really? Key. Yeah, no, you, that's why strippers, some strippers really strip because it's like their career because yeah. none of that money is IRS. Uh huh. It's all under the table. Oh, unless you do funny money, uh -huh. which is like club money. And yeah. then you, um, so like if you have a client and they pay you like $700 in funny money, you have to take it to the club and it's like a ticket and then they give you the cash. Okay. So Got that's it. recorded by the IRS. But like any money you do in the club is nothing is taxable. Oh. So that's why some strippers have like, that's their career. And they're like, no, I'm a fucking stripper. And I'm like, good for you. Girl, Good keep all that money. <laughs> but yeah, after a boy girl scene, it's you don't make a thousand dollars. Say maybe living in LA, seven hundred, eight hundred. Yeah, because really, what you make, you have to like pay out your agency, right? You pay out your agency, um, taxes, taxes, testing, all that we pay for. No one pays for any of that. Uh huh. Depending if you're staying in a model house, you have to pay for your model house or your apartment. Uh huh. But most girls, when they start out, like when I did, you would come out to here, pay for a model house, and the model houses were not cheap. Uh huh. And you didn't have your own room. It was just like bunk beds in different rooms. And yeah. there was just like girls in the room with you. Uh huh. So it wasn't private at all unless you paid for like a private room. Yeah. So Dude. all that is like. Your first check, uh, let's just say you came out to LA. Uh huh. Your first check that you get from said company is all going towards your testing, model house, agent fees, and food. Yeah. For that day. Well, how <laughs> many scenes can you record a week then? Can you record seven days a week or not because you have to get tested? No. So our testing is 14 days. So within that 14 day test, you can shoot how much you want to, mm -hmm. but it's not up to you. It's up to the company. Okay. So if you're white, blonde, blue eyes, they could shoot you two times a day if they wanted to, if you fit that scene. Uh huh. But for a woman of color, it might be two or three times a week, depending on what you're doing, how popular you get. Mm -hmm. So it's very different. And they would tell us sometimes, um, Oh, we shot you out this week, so we'll have to get you next month. Oh. For, like, girls of color. And I'm like, what does that mean? I was like, okay, but homegirl over here just did, like, three scenes this week. I don't understand what's the difference between the blonde girl who's the girl next door yeah. and the woman of color who's next door. The only difference is her hair and her skin color. We're still girl next door, so, like... You're very girl next door. You're very fuckable. Yeah, and it wasn't that. It was just that's how it was when I first got in. Yeah. There weren't too many girls of color, and there weren't too many that were able to work, I would say, as much as myself and, like, maybe three other girls mm -hmm. solely based on the color of our skin. That is crazy. Do you think the industry has changed at all, like, become more, like, there's more demand for it now, or is it? Slightly. I would say it's changed only after the whole blm kind of stuff mm -hmm. but it's still very much the same like if you're not putting 10 dicks in your ass and you're not doing oh anal and wow. gang bangs it's there's not that many girls of color actively in the industry right now uh-huh because some have left because of cruel intentions some have left because they weren't working enough yeah some gained weight so they don't look like what they did when they first came in as like a teeny bopper uh -huh. kind of style. Now they have like hips and ass and tits. So sometimes companies don't don't look at you the same. Yeah. Do you think it's easier to climb up the scale, you know, having less girls be involved in the industry? Yes. Yes and no. You still have to perform. Mm -hmm. So um, I feel like it's a lot more pressure on the women of color, too, when they shoot because... A white girl can come in and not look as good as the woman of color. 
mm-hmm. and still shoot as much and do mediocre scenes and win awards and then the brown girl has to like put in all this work make sure her hair is right makeup's looking good nails everything so no one is like not booking her and yeah. she has to do like top tier shit just shit. to get another scene just to work enough mm-hmm. than the next white girl my god <laughs> yeah it's i didn't see it as much when i first got in i just yeah. noticed it last year and this year i was I was I was helping a friend get into the industry and something happened that I was like, wow, it is easier for the, the blonde white girls in this industry. And I'd never noticed it till last year when I was helping her mm-hmm. get in. And it was like bookings were coming out the ass. And I was like, what the fuck? And it was just like companies that weren't even shooting as much as uh-huh. they were back then. We're like, can we book her? Can we book her? Damn. A studio, a magazine studio. Mm-hmm. Can she come in for a casting? And I was like, what the? Like, granted, she's beautiful. Yeah. But I was like, it's you're blonde and you're white and you're sellable just that quick. Mm-hmm. And agencies, even agencies were calling to like have her on the roster. And I was just like, she doesn't want to be with an agency. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it was like, it, it like, it came to me that it was like, wow, it really is that easy for mm-hmm. a white girl. Are you still involved with mainstream porn? Yes and no. I don't shoot a lot of boy girl for companies anymore because I could do that on my OnlyFans. And, and probably make way more money. Make way more money and market it the way I want to market it. Yeah. Put it out the way I want to put it out. And uh-huh. film what you actually want to film. Film what I want to film. Film with who I want to film with. Uh huh. And the fans will come to me directly instead of going to the companies. Yeah. But girl, girl, I still will shoot here and there for a company because I like girl, girl. So yeah, I don't mind shooting that for a company. Like eating pussy. I do. <laughs> um, what were your like some of your most or like what were some scenes that like really stood out to you when you were doing <laughs> mainstream porn? Cause like you go to a set, right? And they mm-hmm. kind of like ask, like do they ask what your boundaries are? They do. Um, they didn't as much, I would say before, like all the Me Too stuff and mm-hmm. all that things that went on. They didn't, they asked boundaries, but it wasn't as severe as now there's like an intimacy person on set Mm -hmm. there's a woman going around with you making sure you're okay and if you need to talk to someone like if something happened like they're on it now yeah but before they they weren't and i've had i've had always good experience on set but then i had one horrible awful experience on set Mm -hmm. and i won't say the company i won't say the name of the guy because i don't it was so bad i don't remember his name yeah however that scene is still out there and i'm in excruciating pain in that scene you could literally look at that scene and be like no like it looks good from maybe a standpoint of someone who thinks like rough sex love it she looks like she is going to town yeah and really i'm trying to get out of town i'm like no (laughs) i'm trying to get out i don't want to be here could you have just left i could have left i could have walked off uh set but at that point we were sitting there like two naked idiots arguing at each other and i'm like you're not respecting my boundaries he's like well you shouldn't be in porn if you can't take dick and i was like honey i've been here seven years and i've never seen you on set before and he was like i've never had this problem with a girl and i'm like i've never seen you before like not to be that person and say Mm -hmm. that kind of thing but like i've never seen you yeah and i've never had issues with anyone on set including the same director that i've worked with multiple times Uh uh-huh and even the director was like can you take it and i was like what i'm staying here so you can get a paycheck yeah i could go home and the whole day is ruined Uh uh-huh they don't have enough time we've already shot so much footage they don't have enough time to call on another girl especially another brown girl yeah because i don't have the same skin complexion as brown girls that we had back then Uh uh-huh so I was like, I'm here because I want everyone to go home with a paycheck. Mm-hmm. I could leave. So I stayed and I stuck it out. And I, at the end of the seat, I like cried to my friend. I was like, I felt bad. I felt like something happened. I don't want to say what it was, but it's okay. I finished oh. the scene. 
So if they ever see, I'm sure they'll like audience if they go look up that scene, they'll know what scene it is because it's. You can just like feel how the uncomfortability through so, the. Like I, at one point, my hand was like gripping the end of the sofa like that. It was yeah. Like, I've crying. only seen a few <laughs> porn scenes because like I've watched a lot of porn, not to brag, in my day. <laughs> um but i've only seen like a few specific scenes where i'm like oh that girl looks uncomfortable and i like click out because you can like feel it through the lens if they're like yeah. feeling it or like not feeling it but um it's definitely a difference because i've done i've done more like hardcore scenes where i'm like being electrocuted and there's a tear that's running down my face but i'm excited you can tell like oh this is something new she's yeah. loving it opposed <laughs> to the other scene where i'm like Oh, get me out, get of, me here. out of here in agony, like crying. <laughs> so it's like, there's a difference. You can totally tell. Uh huh. Um, so, what was one of your, like, what's just like one of your weirdest scenes that have happened? Weirdest scene? I don't, I don't think these are weird. I think they're slightly gross. Uh huh. But I was supposed to be doing a throated blowjob scene. So, like, really hardcore blowjob. Uh huh. And the director told me that. He's like, you have time. We have to shoot another scene before yours. And I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to go to Taco Bell. <laughs> and great. Good thing I didn't have anything besides like a shake. Yeah. And I had a blue, my dumb ass. I don't know why I got a blueberry shake, but uh -huh. I wanted a blueberry shake. And I came back and he was like, oh, we got to shoot your scene now. And I was like, huh? Literally just gulped down a fucking blueberry slushy. Like, mm -hmm. and my mouth was so cold. I was like, his dick's going to get like soft. And they're like, we have to shoot it. And I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. So we were doing the scene and I threw up blue slushy on his dick and I was like, mm, nasty. And <laughs> did you get just, paid for it? I still got paid. Like yeah. we still finished the scene. Like they just had to wait for like the rest of it to come up because uh -huh. I was like puking over the sofa. <laughs> but they cut it out. Uh -huh. They're not allowed to show it. If it was just like clear, it would be fine. But yeah. it's blue. <laughs> chunks of stuff coming out. So they edited that out. Uh huh. And then I did an anal scene with another performer and there was like a little bit of poop kind of still in her hole and it was like it was gaped so you mm -hmm. could see it but you can kind of smell it too like we were doing stuff before and it was fine but yeah. i guess like a little poop kind of came out mm -hmm. and you could and i got a whiff of it before <laughs> i saw it and i was like Whew. and i'm my face is very expressionable if that's uh -huh. even a word and expressive expressive there you go <laughs> <laughs> and the, one of the girls went in and she was like kind of like going in her butt putting in my mouth going in her butt Ooh. and like a poop thing got on her finger and i was like ah and i almost cried but i gagged and they cut it off because they're not allowed to show that and yeah. she like cleaned out but like you you can't show you crying or you can't show the poop you can't show the poop it's like considered feces porn or something like uh -huh. that so you're not allowed to show that even though i got a lot of fans that asked for scat porn oh my god <laughs> like, no, did you get like strep throat that. or anything afterwards <laughs> no it just it didn't go in my mouth it was like touching the lip so i was like oh my god i just ate shit oh <laughs> <laughs> oh my god but i was like i would say those only two strange scenes i did so like with the po like because porn stars uh they like do a lot of prep right mm -hmm. like they do a lot of prep, so can you still have poop if you're doing the prep, or did she not prep, or? No, she prepped because she's like an anal girl, so she okay. prepped and everything. I just think sometimes things get left behind, or it wasn't like cleaned enough. Mm -hmm. So it was just, it wasn't a lot, it was just like a couple little pieces. Uh -oh. <laughs> but enough to like see it and to smell, smell it. it. But, Cause her butt was just like gaped, and I was like, so you could see like in there. Oh wow! Yeah, it you was like really... open. Like you can, <laughs> if I wanted to, I could put my hand inside. Wow! But I wasn't going to. That takes a lot of fucking prep, man. I tried doing like little mm. butt plug trainers, and even after doing, I couldn't get the biggest one in without Same. wanting to kill myself. Like, it just hurt so bad. Yeah, I can get little toys in, little glass dildos. I've done anal, and I've uh -huh. done a DP scene. But after that, I was like, oh, hell no, I'll never do this again. I thought I was dying during that scene. Like, I saw my body floating away. And I was mm -hmm. like, girl, come back. I need you. Mm -hmm. Good times. <laughs> Great times. I'm like, that's the reason I like 
thought about kind of doing mainstream porn. I mean, I got really lucky with OnlyFans off the bat, I think. So I'm like, I never really had to do mainstream, but I'm like, the amount of things I'm not willing to do, I don't think I'd get booked. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you'd survive. No. <laughs> Just by knowing you, I don't think you'd survive. It's a lot. It's a lot. A lot. A lot. And also, men just kind of scare me, especially off the bat meeting them. I'm like, men are scary. Seeing penises are scary. Like, and I'm like, I would say I'm bi, but I think like on the scale, like I like to hook up with women, but like I would want to date a guy if that makes sense. Yeah. So like I'm on the spectrum, but I'm not like all the way in the middle. Yeah, I, I feel you because when you do girl girl scenes for companies, you got to get in there. Yeah. Like part the Red Sea, <laughs> get in there. Like mm -hmm. if they can tell too, if you don't like, I've had some scenes where girls like other weren't really into girls, but they were doing it for the money. Yeah. And I'm just like, why are you here? Yeah. Because boy girl scenes, you can fake all day long if you wanted to, uh -huh. but a girl girl scene, you can tell Yeah. when a girl does not like a girl. Uh huh. And the companies like can tell, like not the company, but the director can tell too. And like one girl was like duck kissing me. Mm -hmm. and what is he, duck kissing? Oh. <laughs> and the director was like, "What are you doing? Yeah. Open your mouth." I was like, "Open it." it. <laughs> it's funny because the first like real girl girl scene I did, like I've done a lot with like vibrators and stuff like that, but like the first one where I got like eaten out and stuff, you could tell I was just like bewildered. <laughs> I was like, whoa, what is this? <laughs> it's different for the girl who's receiving. Yeah. I feel like like that's more, I feel like for a girl who doesn't really like girls, uh -huh. they're usually okay with receiving, but when it's their turn to get down in the bush, yeah. they're like, oh no, I'm not built for this life. I'm uh -huh. like, honey, don't do girl girl. I always express this on like social media. If you do not like women, do not go to set and do a girl girl. I don't care how much you need the money. Don't do it. Because you can tell. Because on camera. Yeah. Boy, girl scene, you could fake that shit all day if you want to. Inter like, what do you think the difference is between faking girl, girl and faking boy, girl? I feel, well, the difference, but I guess for boy, girl is that the guy is doing so much too and interacting with you. There's not much for you. Like, are you afraid to suck dick? Like, it's just like an outer layer of skin. There's like yeah. nothing. So it's easier for you to just like fuck someone and like look this way and like look that way. Mm -hmm. But with a girl, it's more intimate in, in porn. I mean, in real life and porn, but you yeah. got to make out like that's like men, I guess, love the make out part. Like they want to see you tonguing down a fucking oh, yeah. broad titties you got to suck on titties you got to eat a little ass uh -huh. you got to like open the pussy up and oh eat see the that. ass eating fingering like i'm not gonna do that <laughs> I, I like to toss the salad <laughs> <from there. laughs> I like a little butthole like and like i don't care if no one does it to me but i like a little butthole you, you like to lick the buckle yeah as long as it's clean i like to lick it maybe it's my ibs giving me like ptsd but i would never I let someone IBS lick my too <laughs> okay <laughs> i feel you on that but yeah. i just I make sure I'm clean. Like yeah. if I'm gonna do that, like any type of scene that involves like us like going down on each other, because mm -hmm. I like to do it as a surprise sometimes too. Like I'll go to the pussy and then I'm like, I'll like like all the way up and down. <laughs> They'd be like, ooh, whoa, I'm like yeah, wasn't <laughs> expecting that one. <laughs> so it's like it's really intimate with girls. Uh huh. It's guys, you can just be like, no, don't kiss me. And you don't have to suck on his nipples. You don't yeah. have to like motorboat him. <laughs> uh huh. It's a little different. Yeah, definitely. Um, what do you think some of like the misconceptions are about the porn industry? There's so many. Um, uh, one is like we're dirty. Yeah, you uh, guys get tested so fucking much. So much. We cannot work on an expired 14 day test. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say back then, like when I first got in, there would be some companies that would allow you to shoot on a 30 day test because our test goes up to it goes to 7 14 and 30 so legally we can work on a 30-day test mm -hmm. but i think because gonorrhea and everything is so spreadable they like stopped doing the 30-day test and now mm -hmm. it's 14 day it would kill people if they did seven days yeah because <laughs> you would be testing so much uh-huh but is it like blood and blood, vagina no it's just blood and then a swab Okay. So now it's a blood and two swabs because oh of COVID. Oh, yeah. So now we have two swabs. Oh, my God. Like an actual, do they just like prick you or is it like they take blood? No, they take blood. They go in and like extract like two vials of blood. Okay. 
So it's, we have protocols too, like if there's like an HIV outbreak or like someone maybe test positive for HIV, like everything's on hold. No one's allowed to shoot. Even if you're on set and they call you up and they're like, hey, we just got a HIV positive like screening. You need to hold set right now. And mm-hmm. everyone needs to go home. Damn. And they call, like they will call the people who either were in who were either having sex with that person or did stuff with them or whatever, they would mm-hmm. say, hey, one person you've been with have tested positive, so you need to come in and test so we can clear like clear you out of the system. Damn, and if they test positive, then is their career kind of over? Yeah. Yeah. For HIV, 100%. Um, but it hasn't happened. We have had fake protocols as far as like we've had fake tests uh-huh. come up but it's like where a, like the the test just comes false back positive. yeah so we've had like two of those mm-hmm. in the eight years i've been in the industry mm-hmm. and they were both false positives but it happens sometimes like it just pops up but it's not really there i don't know how it pops up yeah but it happens <laughs> how interesting damn what are some other do you think misconceptions about like the porn industry we're rich <laughs> <laughs> so people don't want to give us money and i'm like no we're not rich we, yeah we survive, I would say. I mean, obviously, we make more money than someone who may be working at McDonald's. But yeah. we don't have benefits. Uh-huh. I don't know if they get benefits at McDonald's. But, I mean, they do at Chick-fil-A. <laughs> but we don't have, like, oh, I forget what they call that. Um, we basically don't have the same benefits as someone who works for a corporation or a corporate yeah. or all that stuff. Like, we take care of everything. Like, medical is all us. Uh-huh. So we're kind of living day-to-day life just like the average other person we just every day may make more as yeah. far as like we got a check this day so we're getting a check another day and uh-huh. we check another day but yeah we're still paying we pay more in taxes than anybody uh-huh. the irs comes after us more than anybody do they oh am i should i be nervous for my taxes then are you paying them well yeah okay then you're good Okay. As long as you're paying them, you're good. But there are some girls that do not pay their taxes. Okay. No, I have an accountant. You're good. Because <laughs> that was a whole thing in 2019 yeah. where they weren't wanting to shoot people who weren't incorporated. So they were like, you need to get an LLC mm-hmm. or incorporated or you're going to work off payroll mm-hmm. shoots because girls weren't paying their taxes and it was coming back on the companies. Mm-hmm. So that was a whole thing. But I pay my taxes. Um. Something I have to ask, I don't know if you've like seen how many feminists there are out there who think pornography is bad and think that women participating in it are essentially like a menace to society. <laughs> have you heard that? I actually have not. Is that so, on Twitter? It, okay. So just to give a little bit of background, I took like a woman's study class when I was in college where in the woman's study class, they made us like read about the the arguments against pornography and why so many feminists are against it and it seemed that the basis for a lot of the feminists who were like against pornography was that porn was somehow a gateway for like abusing women or taking advantage of women or like exploiting women and i remember my teacher had us like look at some statistics on like women in the sex work industry being trafficked drugged etc and Mm. um when I got to the sex work industry, I haven't really seen that happen at all. <laughs> um, I, I really haven't seen a single part of that. I feel like the most exploitative thing I've seen are like people getting in bad contracts. But um, like when there's even like a bad instance where like a guy is creepy, I see him get exiled from like the whole community. So I just wanted to like hear because obviously I'm an OnlyFans and OnlyFans is a little bit different than the mainstream porn industry. But like they're targeting just the whole porn industry, like OnlyFans porn, et cetera. Yeah. So I wanted like your view on everything. It's it's always been like that. Mm-hmm. I would say coming from the feminists or the fake feminists. Yeah, I feel like they're fake feminazis. It. It's always been like that, whether it's them or anyone. They always say, like, porn is bad for kids growing up. It's on TV. And I'm just like, why are your kids on the Internet? There's a blockage for that. Like, granted, my parents didn't block the Internet. and I was one of those kids watching porn on the Internet (laughs) when I shouldn't have been. But I didn't make me a bad person. I'm I feel like if you're going to be a rapist, you were born to rape people like that's uh-huh. just in your mind that doesn't come from porn do people go home and try things that they see in porn and they shouldn't yeah yes 
like rough scenes or mm -hmm. knife play and stuff like that yeah because there needs to be boundaries obviously boundaries, set beforehand. they need to learn Safe how to like do knife play like <laughs> yeah. get a dull knife don't just start with a goddamn butcher knife like <laughs> oh my god come on like there's common sense to things too uh-huh but people like to say they learn from porn or like porn teaches you bad habits or bad sexual habits and i'm like why are you learning from porn we're not teachers yeah <laughs> we're entertainers like we're entertaining you like uh -huh. did you learn how to do drugs from euphoria <laughs> like come on yeah no i did drugs when i was younger like uh -huh. it's just something that you're around and you see and you try it yeah and have you seen a lot of girls in the porn industry get like i mean obviously there's always going to be cases where like girls get taken advantage of but 100%. there's there seems to be like one of the feminists arguments was that like girls get taken advantage of a lot in porn in the sense where it's like they get raped on set or like just some of those statistics and i wasn't really sure about that because there's a lot of people on set i think if it was like you know i remember in the hugh hefner days a mm -hmm. lot of girls were getting mm -hmm. taken advantage but since like me too i don't think it's as like relevant or what are your thoughts since you're I... in it <clears throat> have i been in a situation with a director yes mm -hmm. did i get myself out of the situation yes have we had creepy directors yes every industry has the creepy person or the creepy people that do yeah. things that they're not supposed to be doing it just comes with every industry not just the sex industry it yeah. just makes it worse that we are a sex industry so people look at it even like more cruel but i in the recent years haven't heard anything about a victim or anything or girls being taken advantage of mm -hmm. are the contracts a little much yeah. yes they are i is the double dipping a little much yes mm -hmm. there's things we could change in the industry but it's been that way for so long yeah it's gonna take more than just our voices to change those things mm -hmm. and the industry is run by us but it's run by the agents Mm -hmm. Like they make us money. So I don't think that part of it will ever change. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I, I've i never really had an issue with anyone as far as like issue, issue, court or being taken advantage of. I, most people speak up for themselves these days mm -hmm. in our industry or they go to Twitter and yeah. people like <laughs> annihilate them on Twitter. So uh -huh. every instance I've seen of like a girl coming forward, I have just seen the person get like canceled so quickly. In a heartbeat. In Our a industry heartbeat. cancels people so fast. And I'm mm -hmm. like, sometimes they cancel the wrong people and yeah. like people get just like thrown on their buses. But in an instant, yes, they're done in a hot minute. Uh huh. Do they come back sometimes? Yes. Yeah. With open arms? Mm, kinda, just mm -hmm. depending on who they are and what they did. Yeah, definitely. Because, like, I have personally been, like, groped at clubs and feel like I've been sexualized more at, like, clubs, raves, etc. than I have being part of, like, the industry. So I just felt like feminine or, like, you know, some of the feminists, quote unquote, saying that was just such a misconception of how, like, the industry really is now that, like, I've been in it for a while. And um, it's actually funny. I got in a little uh, TikTok fight. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Um, because there was a woman who was saying that she was a feminist and that she does not approve of porn stars because porn stars know the abuse that happens in the industry. And by being in the industry and knowing the abuse that like they're standing up for it. And I was like, ma'am, you're so uneducated. And she like went back saying like that she would have her <laughs> arms like open for me or something once I left the industry. She's like, but till then, like we can't talk. And I'm like, first, I don't even know you, but like. She's trying to save you. <laughs> <laughs> it's She's like, trying you, to save you. You can't be a feminist and say that you hate women doing like a certain profession that like is meant for some woman. It's really weird. Um, I almost feel like sometimes do does trauma come with the job oh yeah yes have people been in trauma situations before the job and mm -hmm. gotten into the industry and they weren't in the headspace to get in the industry at that time does it happen yes because some people need money and i always yeah. say do not get into any kind of sex work industry because you need the money i understand people who 
you know, probably can't get into like the mainstream side. So they do like the other things like prostitution or whatever. I understand if you need the money, but I always say just don't do it if you, if it's not your thing or mm -hmm. if you have trauma that you're still working out because it will translate in your day to day set life. Mm -hmm. And it will probably bring up some things that you don't want to bring up. Yeah. But you have to have a strong mindset and space to be in the sex work industry. Mm -hmm. Like, I've had traumatic things happen to me when I was growing up, but I'm in the industry and I'm perfectly fine. I'm not perfectly fine, but I, yeah. <laughs> I think I'm fine enough to where I could go to set and be okay and mm -hmm. not put my trauma on the guy who I'm working with because he's just a performer. Yeah. Like he didn't do anything to me. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, you just gotta be strong to be in this industry. Super strong. I feel like both like sexually, also like with the online bullies, <laughs> like you just have to have like such a strong mindset and like so much confidence just to survive, to man. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I just listened to an interview with like Chloe Cherry on Call Her Daddy where Chloe Cherry was saying that all porn stars fake squirting and i just thought it was interesting because like when i have squirted on only fans except they made it against the rules but like when i've squirted on only fans it's been real like i i have to try not to squirt so like on set gifted gifted, gifted? is I'm that not is, that, is no. that not the majority no i mean it it definitely is a small group of people that can naturally squirt mm -hmm. but on set it is very natural it's natural and fake yeah i don't even know if it's like so it's not fake it's more exaggerated okay than what you might do in your bed uh-huh um we drink a lot of water yeah <laughs> tons of water if you are ever on a squirt set and you'll just go around the whole entire set and there are water bottles everywhere <laughs> everywhere like kitchen, bedroom floor. They're like hiding behind pillows because they're like, wait, I have to like hydrate before we like start the camera or like uh -huh. the next scene. So it is, I wouldn't say it's fake. It's just exaggerated squirt. It's a little bit of pee. It's a little bit of fluid. You do come when you're squirting. So it's a little bit of that. Uh-huh. Do you have to be able to like come on demand to? In the squirting um scenes, yes. Like we get, we do the sex part, which is all natural. And then we mm -hmm. do like, the coming part which for some people is natural some people it's not but like when you do the squirt part it is forced to come out because you like that's what that scene is for yeah so they want they need it so they'll stop like we'll do what we have to do and then if it's like time for the specific squirt part uh -huh. like they'll get up close and they'll be like okay open up and then like when you're ready we're gonna start the camera yeah. so it's very it's very technical when you do squirt scenes, unless it's a gonzo scene. Uh -huh. They don't give a shit when you squirt, what time you squirt, <laughs> how much you're squirting. Uh -huh. But if it's like, I just did one for modern sins for adult time and the girls who I did the scene with, phenomenal squirters, yeah. phenomenal. I felt like I was in a swimming pool, <laughs> it, like drenched. Like the floor was drenched, the bed mm -hmm. was drenched. We were drenched. Yeah. And but it was very technical, like they had to keep stopping for us to like hydrate and stuff because once it's gone, it's gone. But like mm -hmm. we're like bloated before the scene, <laughs> which is like we don't want to be bloated, but we have to do this scene. So that's what it's for. Yeah. And it's just it's a lot. But yes, it is cum, but it is a lot of water. It's a lot of fluid, a lot of pee, a lot of pee. It's just a mixture of things. The water, the water just makes it so it's not like a yellowish color. Yeah, that's all. Interesting. The room smells horrible after. <laughs> it's just disgusting. I need to show you my video of squirting after because the amount that can come out is like it's a lot. Awful. It's like yeah. great, but it's like awful how much fluid is in us. It's crazy because in porn, I feel like it taught me that like squirting was so cool that like every guy I've ever squirted in front of thinks it's disgusting. Really? Guys are not as into it as porn will make it seem. Every guy I've ever squirted, like, I had an ex-boyfriend who would, like, yell at me every time I squirted. He's like, can't you just do that when you get home? It's fucking disgusting. It'll make me, like, clean it up after. What the hell? Weirdo. And then, like, the guys after were like, well, it's just, like, messy, and I'd prefer, like, you not to. So I had to actually fucking try to, like, hold my squirt in if I did come, like, using my vibrator, because I'm like, I don't want them to think I'm gross. Yeah, no, vibrators are, for me, extreme, because <laughs> I squirt very easily with a vibrator. Oh, yeah. 
so I try not to use them. Can but... you use them in porn to make yourself squirt, or like you have to? Yeah, I mean, if they're booking you for a squirt scene, they would prefer you not to use it unless, like in my scene I did with those girls, they are naturally squirters. Mm -hmm. I need something to help me squirt. So okay. I used my vibrator, and they let me use it, but it was incorporated in the scene. Yeah, And most okay. of the times, they don't want you to. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't go with the scene. They're like, no, you have to be able to naturally oh, squirt. Oh, see, I always squirt with like, I. it's really random when I squirt without a vibrator. It's like, the, yeah, it's like, I'll be fucking a guy and all of a sudden like the bed's wet. And I'm like, was that you? He's like, no, that was you. <laughs> and I'm like, when did this happen? <laughs> yeah, it's very rare that it happens to me without a yeah. toy. Yeah, coming is hard without a toy, man. Yeah, the girls, they just rub it out and it's like raining and I'm like, <laughs> uh, are you how do you think like the porn industry has helped you like embrace your sexuality or like explore your sexuality or things that you've discovered you like because of the porn industry i'd say a lot if i probably wasn't in the industry i probably wouldn't have done half the things i've done or mm -hmm. try have like i would never let some bitch electrocute me <laughs> if i was not in porn but i was like yeah let's go ahead shock me <laughs> I'm into it. I'm into it. And then, um, like licking butthole, I probably would have never ex done that in mm -hmm. my normal life if I was not in porn. I like pheromones. Like I like sniffing people when we have mm -hmm. sex. Probably would have never discovered I like that. Do you do that on camera? Like you sniff them? <laughs> I do. They like it. Like the guy, like people behind the camera, like it because I like go in. Like usually. If you don't have some type of body hair, I can't really sniff you, but I do like sniff by the arms and like uh -huh. sniff the neck. I do sniff the cooch because sometimes it's like either sweaty smells or it's like your pheromones and every mm -hmm. girl has like their own yeah. scent that I like. But usually if you have a bush, I'm like, I'm like smelling it. And you like it. <laughs> I do. I like smelling it. And I'm like. So do you prefer people like keep their body hair so you can like sniff them? It depends because I like bush hair, mm -hmm. but I know there are some people that have like armpit hair and it's not very deodorized. Oh, yeah. So I don't like that smell where you smell funky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just like you to smell clean, but I do want to smell your pheromones. Yeah. Who has been your favorite person to collab with and what was your scene like with them? Uh, my Nah, one of my favorite people was probably Angela White. And I feel like she's almost every person's favorite person when they collab uh -huh. with her because she's so she's so sexual. Yeah. And she loves she's another one who likes like smelling and touching and stuff. And uh -huh. I love women who like to touch and not just like kiss me. Mm -hmm. No. Pretend I'm your wife, I'm your woman, and this is us being intimate together. Yeah. Like, fuck me. And she's one of those people, and the scene was really fun. And we did it with another girl, too, who's also like that kind of girl. Her uh -huh. name is Lana Paul. She's also a fuck me girl. So it's like, and both have big tits. Uh -huh. I love being smothered by titties if girls have titties <laughs> or the ass. <gasps> Love it, what both. you have. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to get my boobies bigger in December. I'm like, mm. I love being smothered. <laughs> it's probably so bad. Oh, my God. I've only been smothered. This girl, like, wrapped her legs around me while I was, like, eating her out. But then I couldn't breathe, so I couldn't oh, eat shit. her pussy well because she would, like, push my head down, and I'd be like... Oh, yeah, no, I don't do that. Well, that that was difficult because you need to breathe to eat pussy. Yeah. I think the choking me out while trying to eat it was a little counterproductive. <laughs> yeah, no, I like the smothering of the tits and the ass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Daydreaming about it. Um. So, so now you're like transitioned to OnlyFans. I'm sure. Is that basically just what you're doing now? Only OnlyFans or anything else in life? Uh, yep. I'm doing OnlyFans almost every other day. I'm okay. talking to people and shooting with people who I like shooting with. Yeah. It's always fun. And what else am I doing? You're uh, moving back to L.A. I'm moving back to L.A. 
Um, After two short months. <laughs> two short months in Houston. <laughs> but it's okay. I was able to buy my first house. Mm -hmm. So it's an investment. But I realized if I want to keep working and hanging out with my friends. Yeah. I got to be here. Yeah, that's it's the struggle. Because I personally don't like LA that much. I really don't. Same. Except uh, when I'm anywhere else, I'm like, who can I collab with? I miss with? my people. Yeah. And then I did have the bright idea, like, I'm going to fly people here. And I'm like, oh, do I feel like flying people here? So yeah. It, yeah, it's too much of a struggle. So I'm moving back and I'm <laughs> going to look at places. <laughs> Sucks. All right. Well, do you have anything else you want to say to the audience? Um. Do I say like where they can find me? Yeah, that's oh. that's like the last thing. Okay. Where can um, they find you? Hmm. Oh, stupid. Uh, my Instagram is braddyfox underscore. My Twitter is at only Jenna Fox with two X's. And my OnlyFans mm -hmm. is, you know, OnlyFans.com slash the Jenna Fox with two X's. Woo. You can find all my links on it's deals, D E E L Z dot com. Thanks for coming. Yeah, you should do that. That was a <laughs> lot easier. Yeah, you should do that. <laughs> Yay! That was fun. <laughs>